Our next speaker is the number one agent in the world. 8,500 transactions, $3.6 billion. Quick story, I, met, I was trying to get Jason's title business in Arizona exactly six years and two months ago. So I took him to my fanciest place, the Scottsdale Churchill Cigar Lounge, and we stood there, he remembers this, and we sat there and smoked two cigars, had a few adult beverages, and we became partners that day. And after the end of it, he goes, hey, I might want to like maybe speak a little bit. I need to do this thing. Could I speak somewhere? I said, yeah, we could try this. You might say he ended up doing it very well. He's now in 22 states, 81 MSAs, and has the largest partner referral slash lead relationship in the United States with the aggregators. Without any further ado, Mr. Jason Mitchell. What's up, man? All right, so Jay Money, I didn't get sit, a, stand, oh, I'm, you want I'm mic'd as it is. I'm sitting there thinking I yeah, no, you're good. Thing. Yeah, you're good. I'm good. You want me to sit? You want me to stand? Uh, whatever you want to do. I'm How's everybody doing? Good? Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming. I appreciate that very much. So we'll sit and chat. Okay, so I mean, look, literally six, seven years ago, you were doing a couple hundred deals, 300 deals in Arizona. You're like, hey, maybe this thing, I, I don't know, Steve, maybe I could try deals in other areas. I'm like, yeah, I'd love to help with you. Yep. And now you are who you are. So go back to the mindset that you said, hey, I'm going to try this in a couple places. That becomes 80 and then 22 states and what you are. Well, so to, to give some background on that, so my, my team, my company is the Jason Mitchell Group. Is anybody here in Arizona? I saw the Panazos back there. Is anybody else in Arizona? Yeah? Okay. So our headquarters is in Scottsdale. And years ago, I had an opportunity to work with Rocket Mortgage. It was my first partner. And they were sending me business personally. And so I was out there grinding, hustling. And uh, I started closing a lot of deals with them. So I said, you know, this is a great way to create leverage if I can hire the right people. And so in Scottsdale, you know, you know I was in production basically until 2018. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and I did well. I was number one agent in Arizona for like four years in a row, and, and it was great. But I really wanted to focus on this company because what I saw was the future of real estate and what we want to talk about today is you have to look at the fact that as realtors, and if you're not a major lender, you're not getting to the consumer first. And if you're a retail lender, you're relying on agents to send you business, but yet they're getting beat by search and they're getting beat by lending. And so what I saw was, okay, because at the time a lot of these companies that I work with now, so we have you know, Veterans United, Rocket, New American Funding, Amerisave, Cardinal, Celebrity, uh, freedom, you name it. Like we work with a lot, a lot of major, major institutions out there. And so, um, and that's just on the lending side. And so a lot of these groups didn't even do this back in the day where purchase wasn't so important as it is now and how it has become. But if you're gonna do purchase, you have to have a trusted agent network. Because if you don't, if you're a lender and you take a 1003 and you're sitting there saying, okay, great, I got this, I got that, I just need these docs, I need that, you know, when you're ready to buy a home, I'll call the listing agent for you, I'll do my job, blah, 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 blah. But if you don't give that consumer to a trusted agent, the minute that they find their own agent, you're going to get bifurcated because they're going to say, you should talk to my guy, and then you're going to lose the deal. This is important. Let's go over this term. I would use this term for every lender in the room when you talk. I've created, you, I've created a trusted agent network of partners. So when I have a consumer engagement, I want that consumer experience to be world class. Let me refer you to one of my trusted agent advisors. I would be using the terms that's being used around you because one, the consumer, that sounds different. And two, agents are gonna ask you, oh my gosh, how do I get into your trusted agent network? Oh, that's a whole process. Let's grab a quick coffee. I'll walk you through what you need to do to be in that. And it comes down to being loyal, directing business, right? Being a good partner. So, and you did something special, which was so funny because we were laughing. He, Rocket would send deals to 10 agents in Arizona. Eight of them would do what he just said, bifurcate rocket, yeah. send it to them, and give it to their lender. Yeah, the person that gave you a they deal. That gave you the deal. <laughs> Jason's like, I'm just gonna try this. If they give it to me, I think we should give it back to them. So he did. And then so I said, all right, this is a good model here. Let me try to expand it. And in fact, I don't even know if you remember this, but this is a true story, swear to God. So Steve set up like 30 interviews for me to go to Tucson, Arizona, because that was my first expansion market. What well, was gonna be. So I go down there, and I got my ass kicked in Tucson. I'm interviewing agents, and I'm like, look, I can give you business. We can do this. We got these processes. Nowhere near what we had right now, but I still had a lot of business that I could give out. No one wanted a piece of what no. I was doing. 
No, I don't want to do it. I, gotta I don't do need how much. Deals. I got I to gotta give them a referral fee. I got to do this and that. And so I went back to Scottsdale and I was like, whoa, that did not go like I planned on it going. And then I said, all right, that's fine. I'm going to try California. So my first market was actually California. Really? And then what happens is, is like, Nobody, no one knows who I am now, let alone back then, right? So, because I'm not famous, I'm not popular, right? Uh, I, and people laugh at me when I say that, but I'm not. And I'm a practitioner. Like, every day I go to work, I go to work, and I build my company. And so I don't care about being famous, and I don't care about being popular. I care about growing my company. You know, three and a half billion dollars this year will do. I did it just starting with me only 10 years ago. And so, but this expansion was, okay, if I can get them to back me in other markets, Will they do it? But what I did is I invested in the technology in order to manage it better than anybody else. And so my thought was, if I can do it better than Berkshire Relo, better than Realogy Relo, if I can do it better than these guys in a controlled environment and have higher closing ratios, higher lender capture, maybe they'll give me more. And they did. And so this year, to give you an example, so Rocket was my first. Um, and then we started adding partners as I started adding markets. And then all of a sudden it became... If you want to have a trusted partner, you got to call Jason Mitchell. And so now people are calling me. It gets easier, just like anything, it gets easier as time goes on. But this year, for example, we'll manage probably around 65,000 referrals. Now notice term, referrals, not leads. These are people that have gone through an ISA, gone to mid-funnel, qualified, agreed, want to buy a home and contract in 90 days, and now they're being live transferred to his agents. That's his version of a lead, which is actually a referral. Not a Google lead, not a Facebook lead, not a Zillow lead. An actual live transfer lead. Yeah. So uh, how many people are, I want to get a gauge of the room, I'm sorry. How many people are lenders in here? Oh, shit. Okay, a lot. All right, got it, got it. Okay, okay. So what I would tell you is this. What Steve said is right in the sense of, Look, when you call a realtor, you got to give value. And what I would invest in, in a realtor, isn't, will you sponsor my open house? Will you sponsor my Facebook ads and things like that? I wouldn't get into that. Have them go do something different. And what I mean by that is, for us, for example, so we have a lot of partners, right? A lot of my partners are closed networks. You can't work with those partners any longer. That's what I saw, thankfully, in the future, you know, eight years ago saying, I think this is gonna become something, and now it is. Because you gotta think about it. Like, Steve's connected with all these guys, but you can't buy a lead from OpCity anymore, or from, yeah, Realtor. from Realtor.com anymore. You know why? Because they're controlling it. Zillow Flex, gonna be the whole country. Can't buy a lead from Zillow anymore in most areas, and it'll be shut down by the end of the year. M Movado, Ojo. Same thing. Same thing. And so what's happening is, is that these organizations wanna control the consumer experience and they have more money than anybody. And so if you're not partnering with groups like this, you gotta make sure that your agents are either partnering or finding places to hang their hat if they're struggling for business, because it's hard to get to the consumer. This is important, and this is at Rise, what we do too, we, we only deal in Warm Connects for this reason. As a lender, the guys we're talking about are not the big guys. You know who the big guys are that are coming in this exact space, this exact thing? Amazon, Google, Facebook, Netflix. That's who's coming. And when they come, that makes Zillow look like a fly on an elephant's ass in terms of talent. So when people talk about this, we've lost the race to the consumer. Stop acting like you got it. The sphere of influence is who you can maintain. Everything else is how can I partner with, get to engage the people that have the consumer's attention in a way that we could work the rest of our working lives and never get it. You saw it and said, I'm just gonna go become that trusted agent advisor to these networks. By the way, Realtor.com is my biggest client. I'm the largest closing entity. They do 75,000 transfers a month. You know what percentage of those transfers go unanswered by five agents that it's sent to live? Does anybody know? 48% of every live transfer is unanswered. That's a broadcast. <laughs> Are you shitting me? That per, a consumer's on the phone, wants to talk to someone, they ping five agents, half of them never get picked up. Now, do you see why when you have someone like this, tech, system, model, by the way, when an agent says, Jason, I'm not gonna do it the way, but I do, I do uh, 10 million myself here, I'm gonna be on your team, how does that work? So, we look, when we recruit, so we're in 22 states, 
about 80 MSAs. I, want, I don't care how long someone's been in the business. I want someone that's hungry and motivated. Our best agent is an agent that's maybe doing four to six million a year, seven million a year, and they want to get to 20. You know, last year, my average agent added 29 closings to their book of business with our partners. And people say, yeah, but they only get about 40% of the overall commission. And I say, yes. Because well, you 35 referral fees. Yeah, so you got referral fees, and then we got to split 60-40. But here's, here's what the agents that you work with have to understand. Real estate is about your book. Year over year over year, if you're closing more deals, you're going to get more self-gen business sent to you from the deals that you close. And so I want to go back to something, though, real quick. And so I mentioned that a lot of these networks are closed and what I would invest in if I was a lender. Because people think that you got to have these big relationships and partnerships, and you don't. You can do it locally. And I'm going to give you an example. So you've probably heard of this group because you live in, in Scottsdale. I said, you know what? I can take this model and I can maybe do it to apartment complexes. I said, so I'm going to test it. One phone call, closed them right on the first phone call. And this is what I did. I called up this company called Rise Equity. They own a bunch of multifamily in Phoenix. And I said, hey, when your tenants leave your apartment complex, who do they use for an agent? And like, we have no idea. That's not our business. We don't do that. I go, okay, that's fine. But what if I compensated you and compensated them, but I get full exclusive rights to all the marketing for every tenant that you got? And they got, you know, 6,000 doors in Phoenix or whatever it is. And you go, well, what do you mean? I said, well, anytime a tenant leaves, if they buy a home from us, I'll give you a half point and I'll give them a half point. Because our economic model is usually working between 30 and 35%, almost 100 basis points basically on every deal that we close. So it fits into our model. And they go, well, we would love that because it's bottom line revenue. No one's ever brought that to us before. Can you manage it all? And I go, I'll manage it to the nines, no problem. My point is, is that investing in things like that to get your agents motivated to get out there and think outside the box, like how do I partner with anybody? Uh, employee benefits program, charities, we're doing a deal with Phoenix Children's Hospital, like all these things when you start thinking outside the box, like don't, don't do the norm. Tell your agents, hey, why don't you go do this and I'll back you when you do that because if I can get a channel account it pays forever. Now, I'm gonna go the other way. Not everybody's him, I wish they were. You as a lender go and go, I have a preferred partner network of agents. If I was, the, and then say the exact same thing he said. As a lender, you could bring that to rental complexes or charities or hospitals, right? So I always tell our lenders, sometimes it's better that we lead because not all of our agents are great at leading, okay? So don't be afraid to create your agent network and go do the exact same thing because this model, by the way, I hate this, people go, I don't want to give up 35%. You're not giving up shit. You don't have anything. That's right. <clears throat> the consume, you're getting 100% of zero. Congratulations. That's right. These, they have the consumer. Rocket's got it. They're handing it to somebody. Yep. You're going to get 65%, and then you're going to get a referral. You're going to get a chance to build your book. Yep. You're going to put them in your CRM. You're going to follow. What's your blended rate? Take it on those 29 closings. Those guys spin off how many 100% closings as a result? List yeah, them, right? yeah, yeah. So, and, and so we track it. Now, we don't, we don't arbitrage that. We, we, I want that. I want that to be yeah, your absolutely. Go work hard. That's your self-gen when it closes. Yeah. Um, I would say it's roughly the byproduct of someone's self. So 84 for 83% of our business is company generated. But then when our agents start closing deals on those, obviously it leads to more self-gen business. And I think it's over 60% of their self-gen comes as a byproduct of the referrals that we sent them to begin with. It's somewhere around there. And so that's what I always say too. I say, look, don't, don't be prideful. You can build your whole book here. You know, and you can continue to grow. It's just great to know that you don't have an ad spend, you don't have a back office support, you don't gotta worry about a CRM, oh, we got an entire marketing system for you, all these things that we offer as a platform for you, oh, and you're gonna get referrals that close at 30% a clip. As long as you do things our way, we'll support that. And, um, and people that get it, get it. And, and when you look, and you, you, know, you follow me on Facebook, when you look, 80, 788, I forgot what it was, close to 90% of my agents last year had their number one year that they've ever had in real estate because as long as you're doing it our way, we can do that. But they also have to buy into the culture. 
and that, yeah, you're only gonna make 40% on that deal. And not every deal is gonna be seven, 800,000. No. You gotta work the 150s too. And if you're too good for that, then you just can't work here. Share this because you taught me this. When you first join one of these networks, do you think they give you their really good leads to start off to see how you do? They give you lots, mobile homes, land, 420 FICAs, which we found out those do exist still. They give you that because they want to see how you handle it. Just like any of our team leaders would when you bring an agent on. They don't get your sphere book first. You go, here's your leads, here's your expired, here's your, call these guys. They do the same thing. Jason pays his people a guaranteed minimum no matter what the price is because he says, I want that consumer score on a $150,000 mobile home to be the exact same as a $900,000 listing. Talk about how you got that mindset. Yeah, and because if I'm not, all of a sudden your partners say, well, you, ha you have to service everybody. You're cherry picking. Yeah, if you're gonna cherry pick, you're gonna be out. And so what we do is lower price deals, pay a little bit higher of a percentage, but it's part of that indoctrination of what we do. Like, you're gonna get these deals too, and if you don't want that, then don't work here, or don't be on the, we call it network certified team, or don't be on the network certified team. You wanna be a traditional agent, great, but you're not gonna get referrals. If you want to be network certified, great. Just know that the law of averages always work out. In Las Vegas, the average deal is gonna be 370,000. In Phoenix, it's gonna be 440. In San Diego, it's gonna be 700. Because we drive so much business from so many different lenders, it'll always play through. The problem is, is the people that say, yeah, but I don't even, you know, a lot, not a lot of times, but what I had to deal with in the past was people wouldn't even call. They wouldn't even call if it was 100 grand to even explain the market and that it doesn't even exist. And I, I had to fire them. Because my commitment to the lenders are, and my, my overall partners, everybody, even Ideal Agent and, and Homeline, all these guys that we do business with. If you have a listing, I have to go do that listing. No matter how much it is, you gotta go. And if you don't like that, then don't work here. But it's good with the bad. And the agents that understand that, and also, too, what my agents start to under, understand, is that I pay attention to that stuff. I pay attention when you take a $100,000 deal and you work it and I see that it closed, I'm gonna give you more because I know that wasn't easy. And so to me intuitively I say, that I know that person worked their ass off to get that person a home that no other agent probably would have worked. And you worked. So I tell my communications team, give them some more. And that's the stuff that when you start to show that you, you will grind, you will put in the effort. If I open the floodgates, I can change your whole business. But you gotta prove it first and then you can't be greedy, and then you always have to show appreciation because when you sit, when you sit back and you think about the deals that you get, it's crazy. But that's my, my point is, of everybody in this room, that's what you want from your agents. You want them to go make these relationships because you'll be a benefactor of those relationships. So instead of sponsoring some of the stuff that's so, like when a lender sponsors an open house, I literally would, I'd rather you give it to a homeless person because they need it. An open house sponsorship isn't doing shit for you, nothing. Sponsor them to go out and build channel accounts and relationships. Hell, you go out and get some of these relationships and put the program together yourself. Say, hey, look, here's the deal. Like, you guys could have done exactly what I did at Rise because any agent that gets your leads when they come in, you just gotta tell them, you gotta give them a half point and them a half point. Are you all right with that? And build your little network of agents on the channel accounts and the relationships. Since this red light's blinking ass, I know you guys are hungry. It's 30 seconds, 60 seconds, the future of lead conversion. We don't have a lead gen problem in real estate. We have a huge conversion problem. The future, give it to us in 60 seconds, 30 seconds. Well, the future is gonna continue to be owned by major organizations. And there is clearly room in the local market, but where retail dominates, even, even companies like VU and Rocket and these other big organizations, NAF and Marisave, where retail dominates is the consumer still, a lot of consumers would love to see you face to face. Don't think that every consumer can go online and just fill out a quick form and think it can all be done. Better.com, you saw what happened. People still want a relationship. And that's why I believe for real estate, listings can be done in a centralized location throughout the country. But when it comes to buy side representation, you gotta have an agent. And the same thing when it comes to lending. A lot of people would love to go see their lender and meet their lender. And so you guys can win that war. It's just a matter of partnering with agents that you can help build their business together with. There's never, they've been trying to disintermediate the agent and the lender. It'll never happen. Everybody now admits it. 
Zillow tried. They tried to pay cash for homes, take the agent out and do it, lost a billion four, and put their hands up and said, I buying doesn't work, we're out. The, the biggest and baddest guy on our block could not do it and admitted it. They need agents, we need lenders. But will there be more or less realtors and lenders in the next three to five years? Significantly less. Be the group that doesn't argue the sky is blue. We said this four years ago, I'm not paying 35%, I don't want to do that. That same guy was the guy in 08 and 09 that says, I'm not doing REO and that crappy business. They were working at Home Depot six months later. Don't do that. Be the group that says, I see it coming. How do I get in front of it? How do I grab it? Relationships will always be real estate. Go own them. Thank you guys very much. Have a great lunch. We appreciate you. Thank you. Well done. Thank you,